And now I can go to other stories. Um, another one in the news was uh, there's a video game that has a location, a location-based game, so you can make the location in different places. And it's one of these games where, where people are shooting up. Uh, the video games can be very violent. Well, this video game is uh, somebody made it so that it was in Port Moody Secondary School. And this has caused quite a controversy and a lot of concern because you don't want a video game which shows a school shooting, especially in light of what's happened at places like Columbine in Colorado and then Sandy Hook Elementary in Connecticut, that these school shootings are very controversial. Well, somebody has made a video game, uh, well, adjusted an existing video game to make it look like there are school shootings in uh, Port Moody. So the students and the teachers and the administrators are, are quite concerned about this. And so that's been in the news this week. The downtown east side is one area of Vancouver where there's always a lot of news happening. And that is the area that, it's not far from Chinatown in Vancouver, but the centered at Maine and Hastings, it's the poorest area of Vancouver. And basically as you go down Hastings Street, you've got Main Street, you've got uh, Gore going up, and then you go down and you've got Carroll Street. And there's a lot of addiction in the neighborhood, but there's also a real spirit in the neighborhood of uh, many of the longtime residents. They're very proud of the downtown east side. Well, this week there's been uh, an interesting development is there's been an ongoing protest outside one of the restaurants called Pigeon. It's a very high-end um, uh, upscale restaurant at Pigeon Park. So it's the, a nice restaurant in a very poor area populated by a lot of poor people. There have been other restaurants developing in Gastown and then there's Save On Meats on Hastings Street. And some of the activists um, and the more left-wing people are not happy with uh, the arrival of restaurants and more businesses in the area. Others are quite supportive of the businesses. Well, the people who are opposed to the businesses, they feel what's going to happen is eventually these businesses are going to take over the space and then where the poor people live, that they will no longer be able to afford to live in the neighborhood and they won't have anywhere to go and that this will create homelessness. Um, others have a different point of view. So this week what's happened is one of the, the people who's one of the main business people in, in the area is the owner of Save On Meats. And he's got a program where he gives out tokens and people can, the poor people can cash them in for meals. Uh, that's been criticized by some of the activists. Well, what happened was the sign uh, is very famous outside his, his restaurant on, um, on uh, Hastings Street. And somebody stole the sign and they said they were, they went on, on the internet and were bragging about this and saying that they want to fight capitalism in the downtown east side. So the next thing is today there's a hunger strike is going to begin and it will start outside the Pantages, former Pantages Theatre, which is a site at 138 East Hastings and the um, building has been demolished in that area. It's right near Maine and Hastings and uh, there's basically a hoarding around the building and the theater was demolished and there's going to be condos so the activists are upset about the condos because they want to keep all the old hotels for the poor people to live in. So there's going to be a hunger strike starting out there and then at six o'clock tonight it's going to move to this restaurant called Pigeon. When people go to this restaurant to eat there's always people outside with signs protesting and one of the um, views is that these protests are actually raising awareness of the restaurant and improving the business. Um, but the activists want to drive the business out. Another issue that's in the neighborhood but also across BC is the police use of dogs. And so a group in the downtown east side called the Pivot Legal Society has been raising concerns about the number of people across the province who've been injured by dog bites. And police forces in Canada use dogs to arrest suspects and to help the officers when they're investigating crimes. But what Pivot Legal Society discovered was that half 
of the injuries involving municipal police forces in British Columbia were actually caused by the dogs, which are usually German shepherds. So these are very fast, tough, trained dogs that are taught to uh, catch criminals, hold them down, pin them down, and sometimes they bite the people. And uh, one, one man is, is suing right now because he was bitten quite badly by a police dog. So the Pivot Legal Society has been helping this man, and now the provincial government has decided to create a working group to study the use of police dogs in British Columbia and whether we should be having some policy around when the dogs should be re released to chase suspects. Where the controversies happened is when dogs have been chasing teenagers and young people particularly and biting the young people and creating injuries and trauma. And uh, I think what Pivot Legal Society would like to see is some um, kind of rules and parameters around that. It's similar to what happened with the tasers, that the police force were using tasers, which are these conducted electricity weapons the electrical weapons that would shock people, but in some cases people would be tasered and then afterwards they would die. And there was a man out at the Vancouver airport, Robert Jakanski, who was a Polish immigrant, and he was upset uh, because he was, you know, disoriented after a long flight and he was tasered and then he died and that caused inquiry. Now there are rules around the tasering and the same now seems to be happening with the police dogs. The Vancouver Canucks are the religion for many people in this city, in Vancouver. And the immigrants may be surprised to see the passion that Canadians have for hockey, but it is, it is profound and it is extreme. And what's happened um, now with the Vancouver Canucks is they won last night in Phoenix. They are starting to uh, show some improvement, but Vancouver residents have been very upset about the performance of their hockey team this year because they were among the top teams in the last couple of years. Uh, two years ago, they were one victory short of winning the championship called the Stanley Cup. And when that happened, some people got very upset and they had a riot in downtown Vancouver. And that demonstrates uh, some of the passion, although many people were very angry about the riot and these rioters have been going through the courts. But now the team is, has been struggling this year and there has been some speculation that the coach, uh, Losai, uh, Alain Vignon, um, may, may get fired if they don't improve. But they've won two games in a row. Uh, their goalie, Corey Schneider, has been playing well. So they've got two more games on the road. They, in, in hockey terms, they say when they're playing outside of Vancouver, they're on the road. When they're at home, they're playing in Vancouver. They say it's a home game. And they play their home games at Rogers Arena. And uh, right now, things are looking a little better. But if you want to have a conversation with a Canadian-born person and you're not sure what to talk about, just say, How are they? what do you think of the Canucks? And then you can have a good conversation with them and people will, almost anyone will, will be happy to talk about the Canucks. And now for WOW TV, I'm Charlie Smith, editor of the Georgia Strait. Ngoi. Thank you for watching today's Dawn Story. We'll see you next time.